Hello, I'm Jim, this is Dario. Today we're gonna talk about some experiences we've had with Git-based packaging workflows. Um, we've been playing with this stuff, or at least I have, on and off for uh, you know better part of a year. I'd go down some path, uh, hit some dead end, back up, and <clears throat> um, so yeah, we just wanted to talk about the experiences and maybe pass some of that experience along. And there's certainly people in here that are probably a lot more knowledgeable on this stuff than Dario and I. And so if you know you have some suggestions or feedback, we're welcome to hear that. Um, so the goals when we started on this were to <coughs> perform package maintenance in Git right alongside all the upstream development we do. Um, and at the same time, leverage the build service to do building. I mean, it's what it's made for, right? It builds for many repositories, many architectures, so we wanted to take advantage of that for doing the package builds. <coughs> um, we quickly found that we needed to use gitlab.susa.de as kind of the canonical source for everything, uh, primarily because uh, you know the open or the public Git foundries don't have access to stuff like IBS and our internal labs where we like to use runners to deploy and test packages. Um, <clears throat> So along with that, we wanted to, whenever we make some changes to Git, have those automatically pulled into the build service, built and published. And ideally then get some notification <clears throat> from the build service that that's complete so that we could continue on with some CI pipelines back in GitLab or GitHub. And you know, deploy, <coughs> deploy those built packages to some um, test machines in our lab and run tests on there, uh, with the idea of you know, any time that we want to do package submission, we could just go to some nice dashboard, see that all the testing is passed, and you know, confidently submit this stuff without worrying about problems. Uh, something like this. <coughs> Um, a stretch goal we have <coughs> is, which we don't have work, at least I don't yet, is to, the ability to do a local OSC builds in this environment, which you know is now Git. Uh, the workflow makes it really easy to do upstream builds, of course, and any make check style things in the upstream <coughs> project, but. Um, since, in my case anyway, I don't have the source services file or <clears throat> which can generate a tarball to build packages, I can't do OSC local builds at the moment. But definitely want to be able to do that. It's a nice option. Um, to, you know, if you're working offline, you want to do an OSC build minus minus no init, you have a build environment already there. You can actually build a package, maybe test um, when you're offline. <clears throat> so we encountered <laughs> lots of problems <coughs> along this endeavor. Um, the first was no mirroring functionality <coughs> in the community edition of gitlab.susa.de. That may have changed, I don't know, I thought there were some talks of that. Uh, <coughs> and to work around that, we actually have a virtual machine running <coughs> in our lab infrastructure called CodeMirror, which uh, runs a set of systemd timers to mirror code from upstream repos to gitlab.susa.de. Um, another problem I already mentioned is some of the public gitlab.com, github.com, public git foundries not being able to reach our internal resources. Um, <clears throat> an interesting problem that I encountered when I went to submit a package based off of this workflow uh, was that there's restrictions on source service modes. Uh, you can't have a source service mode that enables server-side runs when you submit to something like factory, with the idea being that that source service could run while the, source, while the submit request was under review. Um, <clears throat> to me, I think this is something that we could easily work around. I mean, when you do a checkout, 
of a package that's under factory review, you already get a notification about that. So <clears throat> why isn't it possible that when we submit a package to factory that has a server-side mode enabled, that we couldn't just inhibit runs of the service while the package is under review? Um, <clears throat> another big problem is, go ahead, Dirk. Pardon? <laughs> He said, he said he could answer that if you want. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> it's not a problem when you are uh, under review of a submit request. It's when the review is being accepted and it's in the distribution, then the distribution maintainers do not want the sources to change, right? So you want to have a change process for every source change, because in the SLE world or in the common Cartier certified world, uh, every source change needs to be peer reviewed with at least four, uh, four or yeah, yeah. two people. So you can't have service side runs because that would be source changes that are not reviewed. Mm. That's the reason. So <clears throat> we worked around this problem at any rate by. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to pick anything up and throw it. Uh, You're safe. Um, we've worked around this problem by some level of indirection. So, for example, we have a develop project, virtualization project in our case in OBS, where we submit to factory. So now we have a virtualization staging project where we allow source server-side runs. When everything's fine there, we can just go to the develop project, do a manual <laughs> run, which should give us the same thing as in the staging, and then submit that stuff and not have to worry about uh, you know, infringing on this restriction. So another problem we encountered, or I have as well, Dario has this as well, um, is how we handle the factory branch. Um, I like the name factory for this branch. Um, <clears throat> and all is fine. Um, you know, I have the branch. It's based on some upstream release tag, and I have a bunch of commits on top of that. Um, when a new upstream re release happens, and I want to rebase that branch off of that release tag, um, that works fine as well. If I have any upstream patches in the meantime, cherry picked in, they're pulled off on the rebase. Uh, but then when I want to go push this to Git, I have to force push it, right? And I don't know, I haven't investigated a workaround for this yet, but maybe there's some merge strategy that I can use or something like this that um, you know, allows to work around this problem. At any rate, it's one that I haven't worked around yet. And w an obvious workaround is you know, to tag, you know, put some prepend or prepend the version number on there. So v 9.3.0 factory. Um, but <clears throat> the downside of that is, you know, in the service files and workflow files, you already have a branch name in there, and, and we would have to go and change those things, which kind of defeats the purpose of automation. Um, another problem is the package change log. Um, <clears throat> so currently, source services have a changes generate option. And you can enable that. And <clears throat> what that'll do is, from some previous commit when this service has run, it'll look at all the commits since then and take the git summary and add them to the change log, which is fine for factory. But <clears throit> for SLE, where we need things like Jira references or bug references, um, this doesn't work so well. So we were thinking that <clears throat> we could investigate ways maybe to enhance that changes generate code to maybe add another parameter or something to say, hey, go get this other thing out of the commit message that you know, we can put into the change log that satisfies those requirements on the SLE side. So you know, something we can explore with build service folks maybe to provide such an enhancement. <clears throat> the other problem is one that, um, yeah. In regard to that, um, we for OpenSUSE Salt and the version that SUSE manager ships, 
um, we do that essentially that we store the change log and town crier is used to essentially render and manage the change log. So what you do then is in the source service, you just extra extract the change log from Git and just overwrite the change log file. And then because you have the pieces of the town crier snippets, you build the change log before you force push your branch. Meaning you, you can, even if you cherry pick different commits, to different branches, for example, from factory to SLE, you can just then mush the bits into the change log you want to have, and then just let OBS pull that file from your Git. Mm. It's not ideal, but it's the best you can do right. at the moment. Yep. Thanks. Um, the last problem here is one that Dario's hit more than me. Um, I don't know if you yeah, want to yeah, say does something. it work? Yeah, it's just a mm, yeah, minor thing because it can be easily handled, or I, I don't know if I should say handled or worked around. It was, <laughs> it was just funny to discover it and not so funny to debug, which, which is that um, if uh, I have, of course, the service file needs to be there in, the, uh, in OBS, in the OBS package. Uh, instead, I tried, and it seemed to work, to have for example, the underscore multi-build file, um, part of the Git repository, and uh, put in the root directory of the package with a ex extract file, I think it's named service. And so I did that. And when I did the same for the constraints file, uh, it seemed like it worked, but it, w it didn't. It, it doesn't, actually. And so we, I figured it out, at least in <laughs> that way, that uh, this, you can do that for multi-build, but not for constraints. And so now they are both there, but uh, it was something that uh, took some time to understand. Just that. So anyway, how do we get there with these goals that we talked about? Uh, today, we have source services plus some SCM slash build service integration. Uh, and the source service, I'm sure many people in here are familiar with this, TAR SCM, OBS SCM, SCM Bridge, and those others. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the link here has a chapter in the docs about um, the integration, actually. So source services are also documented, but this link is for the integration between uh, OBS and the Git um, factories. Um, and in the future, there's this thing called Git Native Packaging that, you know, the folks who do this stuff for a living are working on, and Ludwig actually has a talk at 1600 on that, so plug that a little bit for him. Um, so just quickly, source services uh, from the docs, it's a collection of tools used to manage packages in a trustable way. And all the commonly used source services are recommended by the OSC package. So if you have that installed, you have most of these already installed. Um, the <clears throat> at the package level, you define what services you want to run in a file called underscore service, which lives right along with the package sources. Um, and this thing can be run locally or within the build service, as I said, which is controlled by this mode attribute. Um, and here's actually a link to all the uh, info on source services. This example is from um, the liver package, at least how I'm working on it at the moment. Um, and it uses tar SCM. I have the uh, spec file and a few other things in with the sources and extract those out. Um, so nothing really special here. Um, <clears throat> mentioned that the services can be, there, there's various ways to trigger these services. Uh, one is manually. You just run the thing manually on <coughs> your workstation, um, commit the results. Um, and the others are via <coughs> webhook mechanism. So the first is uh, what's termed red run service. Um, <coughs> and what this does is uh, the webhook fires when there's some commit or pull, or pull request to get repo. And it just runs the source service specified in the, in the link that you provide in the webhook. So you specify a project and a package, and it'll run the service file in that package when you know, on some Git event. And the other is a workflow-based. Um, and it's similar, except <coughs> there's an associated workflow file 
which uh, is associated with the user's a, a token ID belonging to your user. And <clears throat> that file contains some instructions on what to do when um, you know, on, on, a, on a git event like a push or a pull request. Um, <laughs> Pretty simple <laughs> little box here showing the, the manual services. I mean, nothing special. Run the service manually and, and commit the results. And then push to, you know, send a submit request to factory or wherever you're needing to go. And there's many, many packages using this, right? Uh, this is kind of the setup I was using before trying to move to a more automated flow. Um, oops, wrong way. So run service, um, not a whole lot different. Um, <clears throat> an event occurs in Git. Uh, the webhook fires. <clears throat> source service runs, fetches the code, pulls it down to the build service, builds it. Um, there's no notification on run service that I've seen that anything's happened other than, OK, I'm running the service. Immediately returns. Um, if you want to know when this stuff actually built and published, you're going to have to go and poll for that, um, which is what I'm doing. Derek says here he'd be freaking out probably. He told, I, so apparently there's a RabbitMQ bus that you can listen to such events on, uh, but I don't know much about that. We need some examples or whatever to go that route. <clears throat> and then the workflow. Similar to the other, except you have a step where um, the workflow description is fetched first from the build service, and then it executes the uh, you know whatever you have in there, which is generally go run source services, fetch the code from the Git, build it. Um, and the workflow <coughs> for pull requests, at least Dario has had some success in receiving events from the build service that things have built and so on. Um, since <coughs> I'm not supporting pull requests at the moment, just push events, I, I'm not seeing this type of notification. So yeah, I go and wait for the builds. This is an example of one of those workflow files. <coughs> this is the libvirt one. So the first uh, snippet here is a factory rebuild. So some, a trigger happens, you know, a push event to the git happens, and I say just trigger the services of this package and project, this package which lives in this project, but only on a push event and only for a factory branch. And the little snippet below is the same for uh, my SLE branch. And <clears throat> this is kind of how I, you know, in a, in a diagram, how I have the thing set up right now. And what I did was decide to have two repos in Git for libvirt. One which is the code, just mirrored upstream, and another which contains all of my CI-related stuff. So this workflows.yaml, gitlabci.yaml, any scripts that I need for polling and deploying and testing and so on. Uh, with the idea being that a push to either one of these will start the whole process and you know build, deploy, test. Um, because you know if I change anything in the CI stuff, I, I want the same done as if I change in the code. And another interesting thing, I decided to put the spec file in with the code because <clears throat> it has bugs. It needs fixed just like code, and it also you know needs an associated change log entry when you make some changes to the spec file. Um, and so you know some push event happens to either one of those. Webhook fires into the <coughs> build service. That token associated with my user points back to this workflows.yaml living in the liver CI project. Build service pulls that down. Some magic happens. It <coughs> reads that file, says, oh, I need to fetch code from these repos. Fetches the code, builds it. <coughs> I then wait for the build. I do that by... Um, using a runner in our lab that pulls IBS and said, hey, is this stuff available yet? And once it's there, then I deploy and test it on runner in our Utah lab. 
That's it for me. I've wasted enough time, so... No, it's fine. I you. you. Look. <coughs> 18 minutes. Right, thank you, Jim. Let's jump to Cuemo and say, or try to avoid saying uh, a lot of the same things because most of the yeah, motivations, for example, are the same. So basically, one difference is that if you now want to interact with our Cuemo source code in general, so either you want to build uh, uh, <laughs> Not necessarily with OSC build, or maybe yes, but even if you want to build the code that we ship uh, in Cuemo, uh, still working. Okay, yeah, fine. If you want to build the code that we ship, uh, the Cuemo code that we ship in factory or in a SLI version, whatever, which means uh, a, a um, certain upstream release of Cuemo plus all the downstream patches and backports and whatever. Uh, it's fairly complicated. It's fairly complicated. You have to do partly. You have to do that partly through OBS. You have to start with doing some checking out the the um, OBS the, the packages um, from OBS. Then there is some environment. You have to set the environment in a certain way and prepare some Git repositories. Then you have to run uh, some obscure scripts that are, although it's documented, but they are inside the package itself. Then everything has to go well, and then you have to you can start, uh, yeah, checking out the sources or trying to build them, which uh, works, but uh, is not ideal, especially for let's say casual. Um, contributions or not even contributions. Maybe if someone which is not deal with the package uh, all the time and, 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 uh, and every day wants to help with, uh, the, uh, with the bug or with uh, whatever activity. So we wanted to make this a little bit, uh, um, a little bit easier. Uh, especially because one of these people that wants to fiddle with the, the package without learning OBS is my boss, and you want to make your boss happy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, and and um, the same also for uh, contribution to the package. Why not? Because Cuemu, uh, and we're happy about that, uh, is. Uh, used uh, mm, and we get contributions used, for example, in the build service, and we get contribution from Dirk, for, from uh, other uh, people, internal contribution from the rest of the company, uh, from time to time, and uh, we really want to. Uh, and, and oftentimes, it's uh, they are not following the workflow, but I really and believe me, uh, there is mm, I. I don't blame uh, anyone for that because it's really unusual and different from any other packaging workload that we have. So it's actually, it would actually be a surprise if they would. And, uh, and so, yeah, this is other, uh, another motivation which is kind of shared with the, what Jim said, but even more, um, even more pressing for, uh, for us. And, uh, and yeah, of course, as Jim said already, if uh, the sources uh, were just stored in some git branches, then uh, you could just uh, provide you know, the name of the branch, which could be factory or SLI 15 SP5 or V800 factory, depending on what we choose, because the uh, branch naming problem uh, um, is, uh, is the same for, for uh, QM as well. And then you can check it out and look at the uh, at the code, the uh, final result after all the down, after all the downstream um, patches are applied. You can look at the simul commits, which will would then represent uh, the various downstream patches. You can build it either, um, yeah, also locally, but uh, uh, with the same caveat that uh, you cannot do it from the checkout of the Git branch. You have. To, you can do local builds with OSC build, but uh, OSC build, but uh, uh, yeah, in a slightly different way. But for sure, you can build it with uh, the um, upstream uh, build methodology. Let's say so. For QMO, it's just configure and make. And uh, yeah, for contributing and proposing modifications, since uh, the yeah, what Jim said is true, and we decided that we would use GitLab because from GitLab we can reach the GitLab, uh, we can reach the uh, test machine that we have in the Provo Lab, and, and and vice versa. But then what I just said that uh, I get 
a few contributions to the QEMU package from inside the company. It's also true that I get very few, but not zero, contributions to the QEMU package from the factory branch, of course, from uh, outside of the company, so from the OpenSUSE community. So I really f didn't feel comfortable to uh, move everything to GitLab, at least the factory uh, side. So I am for factory, which is the part of this thing that I have uh, already there and already mostly working right now. Uh, I'm doing it on GitHub and with a pull request model. And it's already effective. I already accepted the first pull request from Andreas. Uh, so yeah, this is same as Jim's diagram, but more complicated because why not? Uh, <laughs> no, because there are, the arrows are all, are all yeah um, tilted. But yeah, I mean it's the same. So as I said, I let's pu put the accent in these things that I just said about pull requests. So the uh, thing that I wanted to try to uh, stress, although yeah, it's ugly enough that it's hard to say what, <laughs> what I wanted to, to, to make, if I wanted to make anything clear, is that from a contributor point of view, it's possible to ignore about uh, uh, anything about this side and uh, live uh, all the time in, this, in the GitLab or GitHub, uh, and let's say GitHub because it is like, like that for QM right now. Um, yeah, all the time. So uh, a contributor would open a pull request and uh, against the um, github.com OpenSUSE QEMU uh, repository. And then a uh, bunch of stuff that Jim already described happened. So I have, I don't have an example, the, I don't have the YAML file here or the service file. They are similar to Jim's one, slightly different. I can fish them from, from OBS later if there is time and interest and show them. But uh, the difference maybe is that uh, uh, I don't have for now two repositories. My workflow is, uh, uh, workflow YAML file is in the, in the same uh, uh, repository. And, but yeah, then, yeah, the same communication and magic through token and webhooks and whatever uh, happen between GitLab, GitHub and OBS. And uh, the pull request uh, is created. And then it starts to, it starts to wait for uh, the package to be built in OBS and for the uh, results of the build to be reported to it. At the same time here, um, what happens is that uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, a branch is created, a new package is created, which uh, the code that uh, is uh, uh, used for uh, this um, package that is branched is the code of the pull request, which is very nice. So we are actually building uh, uh, whatever it was in the pull request from the contributor. And uh, yeah, fetches the code, blah, 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 it's built. And when it's built, the notification is uh, sent back to uh, GitHub. And uh, yeah, and I have screenshots for that, <laughs> just to make things a little bit prettier than these ugly, <laughs> ugly uh, boxes with arrows. And, uh, and yeah, and then this is the ideal workflow, right? Uh, it's not too, too, dif too different from the actual, but uh, a little bit. And then, yes, as Jim said, there is this thing that, uh, and this is the part that I am still working on and that I don't have in place yet. We, um, besides build checks, let's say, so besides building the package in OBS because it builds for all architectures and, and distributions and stuff, we also want to do some runtime tests in the Utah lab through GitLab. Lab runners. So uh, 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 get, get somehow there will be this notification that uh, packages are ready in OBS because we are still talking factory. Of course, as soon as we start talking SLI, that will be in GitLab and so and it's all easy. Uh, here, uh, you, you probably can tell already that it's a little bit more complicated, but ideally, uh, GitLab runner in the Utah lab would be able to fetch these packages that have been built in OBS and uh, do the runtime test and uh, report also report back uh, the results of that phase to, to the pull request, at which point, when everything is green here, the maintainer, which poor guy, but I mean, it's me, so who cares, <laughs> and cannot really live only on the Git side. It has to have, to have I mean, one, one partly to, to be partly here, but also still a little bit on this other part. Uh, can basically merge, accept the pull request, which will trigger uh, automatically 
the uh, again the interaction between uh, GitLab and OBS and uh, the uh, Devel um, project uh, for the package will be updated uh, with uh, the code of the pull request, which is no longer the code of the pull request. It's now the code of the main branch because the pull request have been accepted and merged. And then, then yes, and, and this is fine. Actually, I was joking before. It's not a problem <laughs> interacting with the OSC, of course. Uh, the maintainer can. Uh, uh, submit to factory this uh, the result. So uh, yeah, I saw. Uh, I I I, saw, I told before that I would have screenshots. So yeah, this is how this is <laughs> proved that it's, that it's working. Basically, the pull request, uh, the checks that uh, started, and yeah, this is uh, I'm still, uh, but it's fine. It just says that uh, th th there is a need for a review before uh, accepting the pull request. The checks are ongoing, then, uh, and uh, here you see that um, the branch, the, the package has been branched to a special one uh, related to the pull request. And here you see that the checks are starting to become uh, green because they have uh, up and OBS has built uh, some of the package and is still building uh, some other variants. And yeah, and when it, it's, it's all green, we can go on, or if it's red, we can just reject it. So uh, the first problem, let's say, or the first uh, thing that we, uh, that we cannot uh, really um, that you have to consider, uh, which wasn't the ideal workflow, but it has to be handled a little bit different, is the one thing that Jim already said, but we also uh, have heard the answer already from Dirk. So yeah, it's basically that uh, this, assume, this stage, uh, this step here, assumes that I could submit, as a maintainer, I could submit whatever I have here directly to factory, but whatever I have here is basically a service file. And everything is, and, and the content is automatically generated when, from when the service file run. But we heard that I, we can't, so uh, yeah, basically, that, that, that's, that would be what I have there. So yeah, service, multi-build and constraints, because as I said before, uh, they better be here, or at least uh, this better be here instead of uh, uh, generated. At, at which point <laughs> I can extra, I can manu I can put them there both, and uh, and the rest, yeah, it comes from the uh, service run and the server side service run, and I cannot submit this to factory. So as Jim said, I tried to put it in pictures, but uh, yeah, the result <laughs> is again not very clear. But what we have. Uh, what we did is to have a staging uh, um, the project, uh, and all that I described before happens uh, between GitHub and the staging project. Uh, then, 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 uh, the, uh, sub the submission after the pull request have been accepted part uh, happens. Uh, uh, still done by the maintainer after he has done a local checkout of it and a manual run on the local copy and then a commit. Uh, the trick is that uh, basically the service file in the staging process, uh, project sorry, and in the real, real devel project from which we submit to factory is basically the same, identical 100%, except the mode uh, of the service uh, or services uh, themselves. Because of course in, this, uh, in the real devel project it's manual and it's triggered like this uh, at which point uh, Oh, sorry, yes, just at, at which point I don't have any longer the service, <laughs> service I generated stuff, but I have the real file. Please. Uh, I had the same problem and I solved it, although it's very stupid how I solved it. You, you need to locally anyway do an OSC command. So what you can do is you can just, if you run OSC service run all, you get without the service prefixes locally all these files. So what you can do is, and what beautifully works, is you literally just do a CP from your then locally generated files to the tar target, which is then in your eyes, uh, in your case, the QEMU okay. devil project. So you still have two projects uh, or two packages? Yes. But and instead of triggering the service, you copy the, you copy the yes, files? Exactly, okay, because yeah. you anyway need to go to the command line to yeah. do the actual submit request. Yeah, 
Yeah, whatever. The, the, the goal is to get from, uh, from here to here with everything being the same, uh, with the only exception of the prefix that come from the server side run, server side run uh, which we don't want. So yeah, sure, we, we can do that instead of uh, manually running the service, but we still need to, to, to package it, basically. Which, I mean, it's not the end of the world. So that's uh, what I was saying. Uh, about uh, uh, GitHub and GitLab and about OBS and, uh, and uh, stuff that are inside our network because uh, in the slide of which uh, is basically the, the, the same uh, as this one of the ideal workload, I said that I want when, the, when I know that the build uh, finished, I want to run runtime tests in machines that are in our lab uh, in, uh, I used to say Provo, but it's not, it's not in Provo any longer, C close enough maybe. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, uh, but of course, uh, either GitHub uh, pull requests, um, uh, so, so while I am uh, on, on, on the github.com side or even OBS webhooks or whatever, uh, how do they, uh, it's, it's not like it, they can reach uh, our test machine in the, in the Utah lab. So, this is, as I was saying, uh, being worked on. I don't have it working yet. This is why, why, where I am a little bit behind Jim. Uh, is that I want to do basically something similar to what he said he is doing. So I need something that, uh, uh, on the right side of the of the firewall, which in this case is uh, uh, inside our network, so in the lab, uh, find a way to monitor the either the PRs, uh, the, um, uh, yeah, um, PRs on GitHub or the builds, the obvious builds of the special packages that are uh, branched and created when there is a when there is a pull request. And uh, yeah, there, is, there are multiple ways of doing that. I have to do some experiments and see what works best. So there is a GitHub API for uh, s checking whether there are new pull requests, their status, and stuff like that, even for making comments. Sure. Um, I was there as well. There is this rapid um, notification thingy. And I built a tiny package around that. Maybe I can show you to this. Unfortunately, nobody jumped on this train yet, but I made it. Yeah, uh, th that's also what Jim was saying. So these are just examples. If there are good ways of doing that, uh, like, 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 like uh, yeah, these RabbitMQ services, we are happy to, to, to try and use them. We would need some uh, yeah, um, examples or, or guidance yeah. or whatever to understand how it works, uh, because I, yeah. Uh, I've never done anything with the uh, Rabbit and Q in general, not even uh, with this service in particular. But uh, yeah, I, but the concept is that as soon as I know from something, a VM, I mean, a, 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 a service file, whatever, in the lab, that uh, I need to do something because a build has completed, then I can do exactly what Jim is doing. So I can trigger a, a GitLab runner in, in, in any of the test machine. Uh, it can do. Uh, all the runtime tests that, uh, that I wanted to do. And then uh, since I am, uh, P I, I've, I've been building this PR-centric workload on github.com, uh, I need a way for uh, this thing in the GitLab runner to uh, contact GitHub and uh, interact with the pull request and uh, signal it somewhere that uh, the runtime tests have been done and are either green or red. But that's easier because, as I said, there are these GitHub API for, for example, making comments to pull requests. And hopefully, uh, from, it's not possible from GitHub to reach the uh, machines, machines in Provo. And uh, uh, luckily, uh, luckily, this is the situation. But the other way around should be possible because it's just the internet. And I hope we are able to uh, reach the internet from, uh, from inside the lab. Uh, so yeah. And uh, oh. yeah. Yeah, but I just wanted to say, uh, from my point of view, I just played a bit with this, but from my point of view, uh, all the interaction between uh, either OBS or IBS and e either GitHub or GitLab should be or could be done using the webhooks because 
uh, I think that the OBS slash IBS is like can call a webhook when a build is either succeeded or failed and the same works the other way so github or gitlab they can call a webhook when there is a new pull request or a new tag or even new comma even new comment in the pull request well whatever so yeah yeah and and uh I don't know if I understood correctly your point. Uh, for what I've understood it, I would say that I agree, but uh, the problem is that uh, uh, how do I set up a webhook on github.com uh, in such a way that it does something uh, in a machine which is behind our VPN? Turn it Sorry? But how do I mirror pull requests? No, sorry. Uh, yeah, but and also it's not. I don't only need mirrors. I need, I need to interact with a GitHub.com pull request. Why? <laughs> it's a well. Yes, I think it's this, this, this is possible to configure. Yeah. At least on GitHub. Um, GitLab probably. Yeah, I don't know. I can do some gating uh, uh, before uh, before starting the runtime tests. Mm, like start them manually after having reviewed the pull request. But. Uh, Yeah, or uh, yeah, or just I I I, I skip this uh, the, this runtime aspect for the for the for the contributions from uh, from outside. <coughs> yeah. Well, let's see. It's uh, it's interesting, and uh, don't have to solve it now. And, and, and this was exactly the purpose of, of, of the talk, so sure, and thank you. And uh, yeah, other things are uh, the one that really Jim already mentioned, so... Um, ah, no, the first one he didn't because uh, it's again something that Cuemo... Uh, a, a feature, I was about to say an issue, but it's a feature that Cuemo has or the, pa the QEMU package has, and uh, uh, not many others, as far as I know, or at least not Libirt um, uh, as themselves, which is that we apply a decent number of patches to sub-modules as well, QEMU upstream as uh, sub-modules, and we patch with downstream patches or backport these sub-modules. So yeah, this is something I found a way to deal with it. It's, uh, uh, it would lead to diagrams even more complicated and ugly than the one before, so I uh, didn't have time and didn't want to draw them, but I'm happy to uh, talk about uh, how, how I, let's say, solved uh, this problem for now. Yeah, either if there's time or offline, it works. Uh, and then there is this git naming, uh, uh, git branch naming thing for the factory branch, which uh, yeah, basically, I, I am going on uh, to, to, to one and then back to the other and then to, the, uh, to, to one again. So I started with uh, these, to using 
V711, where this is the, ver the base version of the of QEMU that we have in factory at that point, and then factory, and then create a new one uh, when we advance, uh, when we move to a new uh, upstream release of QEMU. Then I went back to factory, but with the problem of force pushing. Then uh, I really don't like force pushing, so maybe I will go back to this one. Uh, unless, as Jim was saying, we will try, we, we find uh, a better way of, uh, of handling this situation. The, I, it's not, I, I really don't dislike this too much. Uh, there will be a lot of this branch in the, uh, in the repository, which is a bit ugly. Knowing which one is the current one, it's probably easy because you, it will reasonably be the highest uh, version and then factory. So the bad part is that we have to then change uh, things in the service file and the workflow. This is a bit inconvenient. And that's it. You want to go get the floor back for the reference, but I, I don't think there is much to, to no, say, right? Except no, for really. questions, which there were already some, but please go on. So. Yeah.